Hello everyone, Barb here from barbaderholt.closetomyheart.com. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today is Flashback Friday, so I have some pages that I created, scrapbook pages. They're a Disney-ish theme. I made them several years ago, and it's time to use them up. So I am going to add some Disney pictures from when my husband and I were there a couple years ago, and we're going to get these pages used up. As you can see here, I have some layouts, and what I did was went through some pictures from a trip to Disneyland and just laid pictures. They're, they're loosey-goosey laying on the, the layouts, and they're just waiting to be attached. So I have that set. This was such cute paper, and these were such cute designs. And I have that. And I'm going to show you how I make my pictures work. And there's this design here. And you can see photos aren't attached at all. It's just laying there. This set of pages, I did attach the photos. So here you can see. I have this done. I did my journaling. Photos are attached. And this is really cute and super easy. So I'm going to grab another set of pages and we can attach these photos. Here I am. Here I am. Rock me like a hurricane. For this, I am going to use my big old ATG gun because it's my favorite. I got mine with a coupon at Michael's or Joanne or Hobby Lobby. I did some trimming of photos. I'm just making them work. Now here is a challenge because I don't have four by six vertical photos. I have these three photos of things that we saw from the ship. This was the Columbia, and it was the first time in all the times I've been to Disneyland, it was the first time I ever got to ride on that ship. I've been on the Mark Twain, but I have not ever had a chance to ride on the Columbia. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to create a photo strip right down. It'll cover up this. This will just look like uh, a border. So I'm just eyeballing, lining it up, just like so. Not going for perfection, just going for done. I apologize if that's noisy. Oh, my husband is coming. Maybe, maybe not. We are having a snowstorm today. I was supposed to go to my regular job and decided that that was a little too treacherous. Now I have this this uh, little sidebar there going on and I thought it would be the perfect time to utilize the February stamp of the month called Doodled Borders. This is what it looks like. Lots of little options here. I'm not sure what I want. I think Love, Joy, Happiness that could be kind of fun. Or these doodly woodlies. Oh, there's some little arrows here. So I think I'm going to use something like this herringbone arrow -y ish looking thing. Got one of our little blocks. And oh, what kind of ink should I use? Let me think. I think I'm going to go with. bluebird will be close enough. These pages are older, so this particular um, paper ink is no longer available. So I'm going to just do close enough is good enough. And I want to do 
do one more, but I'm going to grab a post-it note and I'm going to just do a quick little mask job there so I don't get ink on the pattern paper. And just like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Scoot it over and just start stamping. isn't getting in the way. I'm not even watching here. Oh, a little bit. A little bit of my hair. Yippee skippy. And again, just a little bit. And this is Bluebird. Close enough. I think that just adds a little something something to that. And I do want to, I'm just going to stamp that off. I'm going to be a bad stamp person and I'm not going to do a thorough cleaning. But I think I want to do a little something on this page so that I've got some of that inked accent happening over here as well. And I've got this. Oh, I've got this cute heart. Oh, this little strip of hearts. Oh, there's so many cute things on this stamp set. Okay, so I am going to do... Ooh, this is cute. that. Isn't that sweet? Oh, I like it. That is really cute. Stamp off the excess ink. Put this back on the sheet so I don't lose it. Oh, there's a lot of cute stuff on here. In the oh, so adorable. Cover up the ink pad so the disaster doesn't strike there. And these pages are good to go. I can do my little doodly doodly, write a little something about it, and that is done. And I'm going to continue doing the same thing with the rest of the pages. Um, on this one, I will show you what I'm going to do because it calls for one, two, three, four, three by fours. I don't have them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my little paper trimmer and I'm going to cut these photos in half. So this is a 4x6 photo. It's just shy of 4x6. And I'm going to cut it at the 3 inch mark. And they can go right on there. And it, you, your eye just fills that gap in. And it works really well. Um, I use this technique when I do pocket pages. Uh, I think it works beautifully. So there, those are cut and ready to go. And we can get those put in place. This was my husband trying to grab some pictures of Mickey and I think there was Pluto, Goofy, Donald Duck, and the marching band. So he, you know, everybody crowds in, so I'm short, can't see, wanted a picture. He just lifted, lifted his phone up in the air, snapped a couple of pictures. Um, so there's, <laughs> they're not the best quality picture. But it brings back that memory of, of being there in that moment. We were near the castle. and So I think it's fun. And that's what this is about. This is about writing down those memories. This is about documenting and telling stories. And I have one last set here. And this one is going to be a little bit different because I really don't have the photos to go on these pictures properly. So this one, this is a 3 by 4 and again, I apologize that my head keeps getting in the way, my big old noggin. Um, so this is 3 by 4 and what I'm doing is I'm looking at the photo and what I want is that castle. So I need to find 
four inches wide, about the two inch mark here, and I want to center that castle on the two inch mark. I can even move it over just a hair more. And I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm going to whiz it around so that I'm at the four inches here. Cut that end off. Then this needs to be three inches tall. I don't want to cut off the top of the castle. I want the top of the castle in the picture. I'm going to cut it down so that the top of the castle is there and spin it around. Get this to the three inch mark. And I can cut off the bottom. It's people I don't even know. And that can go there. That's how I um, crop pictures. You don't need the whole picture all the time. Sometimes you just need a spotlight of a picture. And that fits right in there. Now this one is a little more challenging because yeah, it's, it's this. And I could do this, but I thought it might be fun to do this. To do just a little angle cut. But, oh, that might take some extra work that I don't know if I want to do. So I think I am just going to, I'm going to just, it's four inches wide. So I need to cut off about an inch on each side because I'm going to make this into a four by four picture. And I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to use my little doodly doodly stamp set again. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm just going to get this down to the four inches, making it a four by four photo. And I'm going to put that over there and I'm going to do that same stamping. Okay. And what can we use to stamp? Something squiggly, maybe. That would be fun. Squiggly, squiggly. And there's supposed to be a photo here. I don't have one. So I'm just going to eyeball across here. Get it close. So what I have is, I have this heart that was left over. From cutting out... You know those shakers. The shaker leaves the inside heart, and it's a really nice shape of a heart. So I'm going to put that there. That uses that up. Yay! And then I'm going to get my squigglies. I've got these squigglies. That'll be fun. What color? What color? What color? Ooh, I don't know. What color should I do? Let's see. I could do black. I think I will. I think I'm going to do black. When in doubt, go with black. And I'm just going to get it close. And then you have my fancy post-it mask. And ooh, that doesn't look like it's well inked. Here we go. Sorry about the head. Gonna do the same thing down below. But this time I'm gonna spin it around so that the squigglies are down. Just like that. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And this adds just a little special touch to your pages without being too crazy with stamping though I think that would be a fun video to show making your own pattern paper stamped background yeah sometimes you got to get your head over it um, I heard someone somewhere online say sometimes you got to stick your butt out <laughs> to get it to stamp right I don't know if that's true but I do know you got to get your head over it sometimes. There you go. And the 
stamp that off. That adds a little something to it and fills in that gap. Um, it would be okay without it, but I really think that filling in that gap, black, um, filling in that gap makes a big difference. Here's a place to journal. And that's it. These pages are all done. All the photos are attached. Just have to do a little journaling. Just gives you a quick idea on how you can make your photos work with pre-made layouts. So when you see a kit and you see uh, we have workshops on the go, this may very well have been a workshop on the go. It, it is very possible that that is what this was. Um, but it, it shows you that you can use these even a year, two, three, five, ten, twelve down the line. Get them out, use them up. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a blessed crafty day and I'll see you next time.